Today, Cobble Vidley has an inspection and we're talking about government subsidies. I'm gonna be filming the inspection, but I don't want to interfere with the inspection in any way. So I'm gonna be giving a little bit of room when I film, I don't want to be you know, in their faces or anything like that. Making a video about tractor tires or weeds is one thing, but when we start getting into the interaction between farmers and the government and government programs, things start to get a little bit more complicated. And of course, as soon as you bring in government regulations and programs, it becomes very political. Everybody's got an opinion and they're more than happy to voice it. As an American, the whole Swiss system is foreign to me and it's kind of difficult to understand. I don't feel particularly qualified to make this video, but I don't think you can make videos about modern farming and not talk about the interaction between farmers and the government. So, Here's an American's take on Switzerland's subsidies. We've actually already touched on this topic in the Okohoi video. This is where farmers are compensated for farming certain pastures in a way that promotes biodiversity. The funding farmers receive for these biodiverse fields is part of a broader program called direct payments. This program started in the early 90s and it's Switzerland's way of subsidizing its agriculture. The idea being to fund stable food production while at the same time promoting environmentally friendly methods of farming, like the Okohoi. This program is also meant to do other things like maintain the Swiss landscape. We don't often think about it, but those classic Swiss views require maintenance. Imagine being a cow here. You have your house right on top of this view. Look at that. It's like a million dollar view in the US. That's insane. Like we talked about in the Okohoi video, if the field is left unmaintained, it will grow up with trees. Millions of people come to Switzerland every year for these views. And of course, that brings money in. But tourism is just one of the reasons that Switzerland wants to keep these fields open. These fields also produce food. Working and maintaining these steep and hard to get to fields requires a lot of time. It's dangerous, it's difficult, and unfortunately, it's just not profitable. Farms are a business, and to stay in business, they have to make money. If they don't, eventually, they'll be a farmer without a farm. Coming from America, it's crazy to me that people farm Switzerland at all. I mean, how can a farmer working on the side of a mountain compete with a farmer on flat, fertile ground for as far as he can see? It's just way cheaper to farm that flat ground. I grew up in New Hampshire. It's a small state in the northeastern part of the US. During the 1800s, it had a huge agricultural economy, supplying food down to the city of Boston. See these lines of piled up stone running through the forest? These are called stone walls. And at one point, they were fences. This was all cleared farmland. And this was somebody's farm. Sometime in the late 1700s, probably during or right after the Revolutionary War, somebody built a farmhouse and barn here. We don't know for sure when the farm was abandoned, but there is documentation saying that both buildings were gone by 1860. At one point, as much as 80% of at least Southern New Hampshire was farmland, which is pretty crazy. But New Hampshire has a problem. The ground is pretty fertile, but it's also very rocky, making it difficult to farm. With the invention of the train, it became cheaper for Boston to just ship food in from the Midwest than it was to have it made in New Hampshire. New Hampshire farmers with their rocky ground just couldn't compete with the wide open plains of the Midwest. Most farmers either went out of business or took their operations out West. Today, only 7% of New Hampshire is farmland and 84% of it is forest. The reality is that Switzerland doesn't have that much farmland. And of that farmland, a very small percentage of it could be competitive. It's just cheaper to import food from other countries. If farms go out of business and the fields grow up into forests, Switzerland loses its ability to produce its own food. Although a lot of these Alps are not profitable for farmers, Switzerland has made it a priority to make as much of their own food as they can. Using the direct payments, they make it possible for farmers to still farm the land while at the same time making a living. Now, are the direct payments the best way of doing this? 
I don't know. I'll let the Swiss fight that one out. But what I do know is that if the government is giving the farmers all of this money to farm the land, and the farmers aren't actually doing it, it's not helping anything. There has to be some sort of accountability. So the government lays out a set of requirements for the farmers. Farmers that meet these requirements can receive payments. And to make sure farmers are actually doing the work and meeting the requirements, there are inspections. Today, the Alps are being inspected. The inspector walks over the land, making sure all the brush is being properly cleared, checking for soil erosion, and many other things. The inspector also works with the farmer, giving them tips and advice on how to improve. There's also a lot of documentation that's required from the farmer. The farmer has to document when the animals are on the fields, how long they're on the fields. These inspections happen at regular intervals, but farmers that have had problems in the past get inspected more often. Now, this is just a very brief explanation of the direct payments. There are more direct payments for different things. If you would like to learn more about that, I'll link the government's website down below and you can read to your heart's content. But I also wanna point out real quick that the inspections for the direct payments are not the only ones. Cobble Badley is an organic farm. There's inspections for that. And there's also animal welfare inspections and other things as well. But these are kind of all their separate topics. And I think this has been enough about government stuff for one video. So the inspection is finished now and I'm on to the next job for today. Um, we've got to get this barn ready for the sheep. Now it doesn't really look like a sheep pen at the moment. Um, and that's because it's already been taken down and washed out and it's already started to get a little bit dirty. But anyways, we've got to get all of this uh, put together um, for the sheep to come in here today. machine that's sitting in my way right here is a hay blower and I had never heard of this before moving to Switzerland but basically um, you hook it up to a tractor you put the hay in there and it sucks it in and then blows it out the top and then you've got these vent tubes over here whatever you want to call them uh, and then you can blow it up into a barn so we use it in the uh, barns that are up in the Alps um, we don't use it that often I don't know if we'll use it this year or not Maybe it'll be in a future video. We'll see. So we're only using part of the area today. So I've got all of the fences set up on one side of the barn. The other side over there is for the valley's uh, sheep, but they're not here today. Um, and then in the middle here is a walkway. Obviously it's kind of being used for storage right now. In the winter, this would be all cleared out. So the floor plan is something that Barbara designed last year. And then we built it also last year. Um, and it's more of an open floor concept because you know, that's what's in, but also you can see the sheep better. And then everything is removable so we can take everything down um, and then clean all the manure out and wash it. So this area in here is the living area for the sheep and we'll spread straw on the floor for them to sleep in. And then here are the drains where all of the liquids drain out. And in Switzerland, there's a regulation. Each animal is required to have a certain amount of floor space to sleep on. So this meets all of those regulations and then also animals are required to have a certain amount of space to eat. So I'm not sure what the regulation is. I think maybe, is it 50 centimeters per sheep? I'm not really sure. But anyways, this complies with that as well. Um, also, it's more of a trough and this is to help minimize hay waste because when the sheep eat out of something hanging in the air, they drop some on the floor and it gets wasted. So this helps a lot with that. Everything is contained and then um, Anything they don't eat, we can clean out and use for something else. Another important part of all of the animals living space is that they're required to have access to the outdoors. So it's got a sliding door here that is uh, controlled with this cable. So you can pull it up over there so they can go outside during the day. They've got an outside area. And then at night we close it so no other animals like wolves can get in here. So we're gonna bring the sheep in now. They're in this pasture right next to the barn already so it's just a short little walk bring them into the barn i forgot to mention this but the reason eric is bringing the sheep into the barn is so that they can receive a treatment for worms once that's finished they'll be right back outside <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, hit the like button, drop a comment. That's always appreciated and have a good one.